So as you guys know, we are still shopping for our perfect trailer for our next rig. And as you've seen, we found a lot of not so perfect trailers. Today we're gonna to talk about our favorite travel trailers. So if you've watched our RV shows before that we go to, we're usually far more disappointed than we are impressed. I don't want you to think we hate everything out there, we don't. There are actually some travel trailers that we really like. And this will be a beneficial video for those of you looking for a travel trailer. It will save you hopefully a ton of time because we've done an enormous amount of research both online and in person and these are our favorites. Airstream, Living Vehicle, Outdoors RV, Grand Design, Black Series, Little Snoozy, Bigfoot, the Airstream Nest, which I'm going to put in its own category, and Escape Tiny Homes. Now I'm going to talk about each one. As you know, we love Airstreams. We've had two of them for the past two years and we've lived in them full time. They're beautiful. There's nothing like them on the interior. They're inviting. They're warm. There's tons of windows. The appearance is up to date uh, and the build quality is extremely high. Airstreams for better or for worse, have kind of become the trendy trailer to travel in these days. They're beautiful, it makes sense. You take a picture of them in the outdoors, it's just iconic and they look awesome. But for us, it's been, they're almost a little too trendy. We will kind of want to try something different instead of doing what everyone else is doing now. So we are not going to be going with an Airstream. Also, we believe in living debt free. And so when we talk Airstreams, we are always talking about used ones. I think a brand new Airstream is a an unwise way to spend that much money personally like the airstreams from 06 07 08 are almost identical to a 2018 or 2019 i mean maybe you don't get ducted roof air ac vents but almost every other thing is identical including layout axles all that stuff and in my opinion they built them better up till 2012 in 2013 they started like they didn't up the number of workers at the Airstream plant, but they started churning out, I don't remember, 20, 30,000 more a year. And when you don't add more workers, but you increase production, you're going to be cutting some corners. And we've seen a lot of corners cut on quality and fit and finish on the newer trailers. So we don't believe in buying new trailers um, anyway, if you can help it, because new trailers have a whole assortment of bugs to work out, even Airstreams. And so you end up taking them back to the dealer multiple times for warranty work. Also, Airstreams, I didn't feel like were super rugged for us. Mo it seems like most Airstreams are meant to be in pavement all the time and in traditional full hookup RV parks. They kind of cater to the Porsche, Mercedes, uh, upper class, ritzy, kind of um, yuppie crowd and they don't really handle off-road very well there's very low ground clearance uh, when we would take ours off-road we would pop rivets and have to fix those and put them back in and I didn't feel like the outer shell while it is gorgeous I didn't feel like it was very durable um, I was always worried to get scratched on something or something would hit it and, and hurt it that way so there's that and I also don't they don't have a lot of storage in them we are outdoors adventurous we have kayaks and backpacks and hiking gear and rock climbing gear and mountain bike gear and airstreams felt like this quaint little apartment but there was hardly any place to put all of our gear and so that's one major reason we did not go with an airstream for our next one Anyway, we still like them. Awesome build quality, beautiful interior, awesome layout, and the best part, in my opinion, is the resale value. You buy a used Airstream for forty, fifty thousand dollars. You can use it for two years and turn around and sell it for forty, fifty thousand dollars. You're not it, there's like almost no risk in taking them out as long as you take care of it, and that is the exception in the whole um, trailer and RV world. Also, Air Forums is an extremely good reason to get an Airstream. The Air Forums is an online bulletin board where people can chat, post problems, you can search for past problems, and there's a really good network of a lot of knowledgeable Airstream people. They have diagrams and schematics up there, and since the trailers haven't changed a whole lot in the last 50 years, a lot of the, the techniques to repair them 20 years ago are the exact same today. Try doing that on a forest river or something like that. I mean, they would change the wiring halfway through each year and never print a wiring diagram. So that's another huge plus for an Airstream. All right, the next one is the living vehicle. 
I haven't seen these in person. I be, would be surprised if there were more than 10 of these built. They're kind of a new company, and they're built by this cool couple who used to remodel and build custom Airstreams, Hoffman Designs. They were interior designers, and it looks every bit as good as an Airstream on the inside. And there are some really cool things they're doing. They're made by ATC Trailers, the actual trailer itself, and ATC um, is really well known for aluminum toy haulers. Pros and cons to them, and this goes for ATCs too. ATCs, while extremely robust, use no wood, and so a lot of people like that. Nothing to rot. It's all aluminum. To me, it felt like a shop more than a home. Like all the corners were super sharp, squared aluminum ones. I didn't want to raise a daughter in that. It, it lacked a little bit of the home feel. And I think Living Vehicle has done a good job bringing woods and natural um, materials into it to make it feel more like a home. Um, I like that it's taped together. It's so crazy. You need to watch, if you're geeking out on this and interested in a living vehicle, you need to watch their full hour and a half long tour where they explain everything. Um, but ATC, they design those aluminum frames and then they use that VHB tape that we use to keep our solar panels on. And that VHB tape actually acts as a thermal barrier so the cold aluminum outer skin does not transfer heat to the interior aluminum pieces, which is really cool. And Living Vehicle has thought of so much stuff. They've got the basement, they've got the central vac, they've got the way they've pieced the insulation together with the lighter stuff up top, and they've really thought where the weight needs to be on it. They've put a lot of thought into it. And it's a beautiful, from the internet and videos, it's a beautiful trailer. We were really interested in one, but there were some some big reasons we didn't buy them. And number one is price. It's $150,000 for one of these things. And for us, we want to settle down one day and we don't want to dump all of our savings into one of these RVs that who knows what it's going to be worth in five years. Is it going to be like an Airstream where it'll totally hold its value? Or is it so unknown that it'll only be worth sixty grand? And that would be pretty hard to eat $90,000 over, you know a couple years using it. I really don't know. There's a lot of unknown. And since they're so new, we can't buy them used and save the money there. There were other little things I didn't love, like um, it doesn't have an awning. I totally get his rationale behind it, that they get ripped off and they get broken and they're expensive. But I don't have a place to store that umbrella when I'm traveling all the time. I gotta admit, my probably my favorite part of the living vehicle is that tilt down deck canopy they have and i think we're going to see a ton more of those on more trailers then you can have sliding windows you have big windows lots of light extra square footage that you don't have to carry around and it's way simpler than a slide we're seeing that on a lot of toy haulers too especially the big triple axle fifth wheel ones where the back ramp will turn down and then the side will have a ramp with a sliding door i really like the sliding door with the ramp idea I also think Living Vehicle are the only travel trailer that's actually ready to go for full-time off-grid living. It comes with lithium batteries, it comes with a solar setup, the electronics look super dialed, so you can boondock from day one with this thing. I didn't feel like the tanks were quite as big as they could have been, but I still think it's the only travel trailer I've seen that is actually understands what a true solar setup means. I mean, most most tra trailers have one little solar panel to trickle charge your battery. This thing is seriously meant for some serious use. It's got a massive inverter, massive battery bank, and huge solar array. And it's really cool how they've designed it. So huge props to Living Vehicle for thinking outside the box, for building something that is meant to be used right off the bat. But yeah, for me, the, the price, the $150,000, that's out of my budget. It won't be for some of you, and some of you might really want that. It was also quite big. It was a 28-footer. It had low ground clearance for me. I don't think it could have gotten most of the places I wanted to get into, and it's very heavy. It was something like 8,800 pounds dry, and so we'd probably take it up to 10,000 pounds with water and with all our stuff in it, and that would be pushing it for our truck, which means we'd need to get a one-ton or three-quarter ton, and I didn't quite want to go that route. Either way, we love the living vehicles. Since they're so new and so expensive and so rare, we haven't seen one in person. I'd love to check one out in person. Um, but that is kind of a hard sell, 150 grand on a trailer you've never seen in person. Another traditional trailer that we've had an easy time finding is made by Outdoors RV. 
Now they're owned by the Nash family, which also makes Nash and Arctic Fox. Arctic Fox has a great reputation for building true four season units on their own frame and Outdoors RV is exactly the same. We don't have any Nash dealers near us in the West Coast and we've never been able to see a new Nash actually or an Arctic Fox, but we have been able to see plenty of Outdoors RVs. So some things I love about Outdoors RV, they're built on their own purpose-built frame and each model has a unique frame. A lot of traditional cookie cutter RVs or travel trailers will use the same frame across all their different models, whether the bathroom's in the middle or in the front or this or that, they use the same thing. Outdoors RV doesn't. They balance it. It's also a spring-loaded frame, so if you've ever seen those semis that are kind of arched with the, when there's no load on them, then they load them up with heavy things and they flatten out. The same thing uh, goes for Outdoors RV. So huge build quality, really great um, trailers. They have lots of ground clearance. They have fairly up-to-date interiors. They're not amazing, but they're okay. Um, but I just felt build quality is amazing. And they have great insulation and good size tanks. However, there's one thing, and it's just one thing that kept us from getting it, and it sounds so stupid, but the way they would orient their bathtub. So all of their baths, all of their showers have the, the little shower pan or bathtub in some of them. And so if the trailer's going, you know, this way, they would orient the bathtub this way so it would stick out so much and it would kind of pinch off the trailer into this narrow little hallway. Uh, with one exception, the 28-foot bunkhouse model, I think that's the model, that does not do that and we love that trailer. Uh, but it was a little too big for us. But every other one, they turn the bathroom, the bathtub the wrong way so then the bath the bathtub sticks out into the trailer which really makes it feel confined and closed off we like an open feeling trailer so if they would just rotate that bathroom 90 degrees they could get a much better feeling trailer now outdoors rv is also starting to make toy haulers i've never seen one in person but we were super interested in the 22 footer but by the time it was time for us to purchase those still weren't available so we weren't able to see one and purchase them now outdoors rvs aren't cheap they're you know they're in the Thirty-nine to fifty-five thousand dollar price range for what we were looking at, and while they're super well insulated, they're super well built. They've got that awesome frame. They have good ground clearance. All those things. I don't feel like they're twice as good as some of like the twenty-five thousand dollar trailers out there. They're way better, but they're not twice as good. So anyway, that's Outdoors RV. Another one we really like is Grand Design. They make beautiful stuff. They're most well known for their fifth wheels, really well built as well. I would say same quality as Outdoors RV. Um, I really like them. They had a Momentum, is their brand of toy haulers, and I think it was a 25G we were really interested in, but they kind of killed it. The bedroom had to be on a slide, and that was the deal breaker for us. Like you, you had to fold up the bed every time you put the slide in, like fold the bed in half. That wouldn't work with our beddies. It was just a pain. A lot of the time we spend the night at truck stops and I don't want to be at a truck stop and not be able to extend my slide because there's a truck right next to me. So for us, that's one reason we didn't get it. They're also in the $55,000 price range, but they're really well built, great heating, great insulation, great materials, great design. Uh, they're probably my favorite layout interior wise, like colors and feel of, and all that, over any other traditional travel trailer. Um, I really like the grand designs. Now, another interesting trailer that we still haven't seen in person is the Black Series. They make trailers in Australia, and here's the info I've gathered from the internet. It may or may not be true. I, you read it online. It doesn't mean it's true, but this is what I've found. So Australia, this Black Series company, gets the frames shipped in from China, and then they put them all together in Australia and sell them in Australia. Well, the company that makes the frames started Black Series North America, the Chinese company, and they're now shipping them to L.A. and building the same... Um, Australian style ones in California except they've done everything they've switched everything over so it's 120 volt instead of 220 they've switched everything so the curbside stuffs on the curbside so your dump valve is on the right side when you pull into a park so um, they've fixed all those problems that we've been worried about with importing an Australian trailer they have independent suspension they look extremely rugged they're made with a wood frame with uh, normal siding so I don't know how strong that'll be over time it might be super strong 
we actually thought we had a deal with them and we were talking with them about promoting their products and working together and we thought we had something locked down but in the last minute things slipped through the cracks I don't know what happened but uh, it turned out we didn't have a deal with them so we never got to see one in person and we never got to feature one on this channel um, but they're doing some really neat things with them they have the high ground clearance they have like onboard water filters so you can filter your drinking water right from the sink some of the models have a washer and dryer inside of them that don't take up a huge amount of space there were a couple concerns we had with them though. First, they use this polyblock hitch, um, which is different than a traditional ball. Um, and I don't know how that would work with a weight distribution hitch. A lot of the pictures I've seen from them on Instagram, they're not using them and it's often overloading the truck. They're pretty heavy. Also, they are not insulated on the tanks underneath. The tanks are just wide open underneath. And at like 50 grand, which is what these are going for, I think they should have that. Also, some models didn't come with heaters. I don't know if that's an Australian thing, but I've called a few dealers that had them, and I said, you know, what's going on? And they said, well, it never came with a heater. We can install one for an additional price. And, you know, if I'm going to be living in it, it needs to have a furnace. Um, so that was a pretty big deal. And, and they were totally open underneath. There was no none of that corrugated plastic or insulation or anything underneath. Um... And also the floor plans. I couldn't find one that I loved for full timing. The 17, the HQ17 is close, but the kitchen's tiny. The HQ19 is cool, but the bathroom's huge and you lose the, the rear bunk. If they would combine the HQ19 and the HQ17, I think they would have a pretty cool model that could be uh, lived in full time. It'd be tight, it'd be small, but I think it could be done. Their interiors I need to see in person. I've heard mixed reviews. I've heard they look amazing like Airstreams, and I've heard they've people have seen vinyl peeling, and it just looks awful. So I really don't know. I love what they're going for, and I wish them success, and I hope they catch on. We would use the heck out of a high-clearance travel trailer with lots of ground clearance and um, all the cool suspension features. We would take that into places you could get no other trailer, and that is really appealing to me. So sad that it didn't work out with... Black Series, we really wanted to partner with them, but for one reason or another, it just didn't work out. All right, what else? Uh, let's talk about the little snoozy. For some reason, I cannot get this trailer out of my mind. It's a tiny single-axle trailer. It's like a uh, uh, competition for the R-Pod or the um, Scamps or the Casitas or the little Olivers, and I don't know why I like them. They're cheap. I do know why I like them. It's an awesome layout. They have a cassette toilet, a wet bath, um, the bedroom's tucked up in the front, they have pretty decent windows, and they can be towed with just about anything. It's not big enough for us, but man, do we love those little snoozies. They're fiberglass construction, super robust, super strong. They, do, um, they don't come with propane. You can get propane installed, and then by a third party person, but they're not, I don't think they wanted to deal with the insurance of certifying propane and all that, which I can't really blame them. If I started a trailer company, that'd be a, a nightmare trying to insure all that stuff. But I'm a big fan of propane. I think it's an excellent energy source. Um, anyway, those little snoozies are cool. If you're looking for something small for like a week at a time max for two people, I think they've got some really cool features in there. Another trailer we like that we've never seen in person, other than passing by and at a park, we've never been inside, is Bigfoot. Bigfoot is a well-known brand in the camper trailers, and especially up in the Canada, northern Washington, Montana area. They are a full fiberglass construction. They're like two hot tubs sandwiched together, so kind of like the casitas, and they're super burly. What I love about those fiberglass ones is how rugged they are, and they just hold up after years and years of abuse. The interior is super dated, pretty ugly. They have a high resale value. I just haven't been able to see one in person, but I, they really appeal to me with the how rugged they are with that fiberglass construction. And now let's talk about the Airstream Nest. I love the Nest, but I could never live in it. It's way too small. It's way smaller than it looks online. So a little story about the nest. The guy that designed the nest actually 
uh, first started out revamping casitas. He would do new interiors for them and, and spruce them all up and make them custom for people. And after a while, a couple customers said, why don't you just build a fiberglass one from scratch and fix all the problems you don't like with the casita? So he did. And that's how the Nest was born. And he was about to release it, I think it was 35 grand, and he was taking pre-orders and stuff, and then Airstream came in and bought him because... They either thought it was a great idea, or they recognized his great eye, or they were scared of the competition. So Airstream bought him up, and now they're selling him for 45000 But Airstream's done a good job with this. When I've seen him in person, great design, classic Airstream uh, style and uh, pricing and interior. But I love the wet bath. That's my favorite wet bath ever. It's not big enough to actually do anything in. We couldn't work in it. Um, a lot of them you have to take the dinette down to put the bed up every night. That wouldn't work for me. But I would love to see like a 25-footer dual axle nest with some ground clearance. I think that could be really cool. Um, and that brings us to one other option we're looking at. And that is the Escape Tiny Houses. Now... We wanted a tiny house before we even did the RV thing, but as we looked into where to put them and stuff like that, you realize there's a lot of problems. You can't just find someone with this stunning 100-acre land overlooking a river who will let you park there for free. Go figure. Uh, but even when we looked into buying land and having a tiny house and moving it around while we tried to decide where to live, they're not easy to move. They are heavy. They're not meant for moving stuff. Uh, I imagine rattles, and they're not, they're not meant to be picked up every weekend. But when we look at these escape tiny houses, um, you can it's escapetraveler.net. They just came out with a new model, and it's called the Vista Boho. Uh, is that it? Yeah, the Vista Boho. And it's got interior like a little cabin. I think it looks better than Airstream. Way better use of space. It has huge windows. Um, it has desks. It has like residential kitchens. Like, I could live in this thing if it were parked somewhere. The tricky part is they don't come with tanks. So if you're trying to live off grid, yeah, you can add solar and batteries to it but your wastewater has to go somewhere. They can add tanks to them, but I think they're only 30, maybe 40 gallons. It's an extra cost, and I think it would reduce ground clearance. There's all sorts of options, and they can put the trim you want on it and kind of custom build it to you. They can even lift it and swap the axles so that the springs are on top of the axle instead of underneath and get another four inches of ground clearance on it. I think they're gorgeous, and I'm tempted to get one one day. I would love to but I've never seen one in person. They claim that they're meant to be towed all over and it would have no adverse effects towing it around like a normal trailer, but that's I don't know if I can trust that. They're small enough. You know, this is one of their smallest models. I think it's around 8,800 pounds, which is a lot. It's a lot like the living vehicle. You'd probably need a three-quarter ton truck to tow this thing around. There's a lot of wood. There's a lot of glass. I wonder if uh, the windows could handle being passed by a semi without getting blown out. I don't know. There's a lot of questions. But I'm very intrigued by them. So I'll be keeping an eye on them. Who knows? Maybe one day we'll end up in one of those and get to try it out or buy a plot of land and plop that on it as a house. We'll see. Anyway, there are some good travel trailers out there. I know I've mostly talked about the downsides of these, but there, that's only to explain why we aren't buying them. But there are some really good travel trailers out there. 99% of what's out there is junk. But these, these ones that I mentioned are totally worth looking into if you're thinking about full-timing or living in one, uh, whether it's on-grid or plug, plugged in all the time or off-grid, whatever. Um... I, I recommend you look at these as a starting point. Now, I'm sure there are going to be some people that are offended that I didn't mention their current brand and their favorite brand. There are other good ones, but in my opinion, these are the only ones that I've seen or, or learned about that cut the mustard. So, hope that helps you in your shopping experience. Maybe you found out about one or two brands you didn't know before, and maybe it leads to your future home. I don't know. Hopefully it helps. Thanks for watching. Keep exploring.